Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering how to beat the Extreme AI in 2023 for Age of Empires 2. There's a lot of newer players that come into the game and they practice against the AI and usually the goal is to beat the Extreme AI before moving on to ranked games. That's not like a set in stone rule but it's something that a lot of people follow and I've seen it plenty of times on Reddit for example of people playing the Extreme AI until they can beat it and then moving on. And so in this video I'm going to showcase how you can beat the Extreme AI yourself. Now, obviously, I'm a professional player, so for me, I can you know beat multiple extreme AI as well. But I'm gonna try to slow down my gameplay and focus more on what you should focus on yourself, uh, what you should be uh, working towards, and how you should go about developing a strategy to beat the extreme AI. Now, for most people that already know, it's nothing new to you, but I actually have strategy guides available for my Twitch subscribers and my Patreon members. And for just a small investment, you get access to all kinds of top tier strategies that I use. And this is the perfect place to start uh, when learning to play this game and learning to beat the Extreme AI. And so as you can see, there's a bunch of these and I'm gonna do in this video, the 20 pop one range archery. So you just click it and look at this beautiful guide here. I put a ton of effort into these. So I make sure they're top tier for you guys. You get the introduction of what you wanna do. You get the sieves that work for it. We're gonna use Britons in this video. The exact build order to take you to 15 minutes into the game and then some goals as to what to do after that. So I give you guys some follow-up strategies as well. So we're gonna be using this one, the 20 population, one range archers with the Britons. And I'm gonna see if we can take on the extreme AI today. Let's hop in, ooh, excuse me, and start things off. So we're gonna start with naturally two houses, very standard stuff. This is what I consider to be the bread and butter of AOE 2. And then we could use the sheep to scout if we're interested, uh, but otherwise, if you're just starting out, it's totally cool to send them back to the town center. And notice my clicks and my priority here. So I'm using my scout to scout the map. You can do a little circle there. And my main priority is getting my villagers to work. As far as where the villagers go, again, all of that's in the strategy guide. I highly recommend if you guys can uh, get your hands on that. It's $5 Twitch sub or Patreon membership. And you can just get it, you download it, and I add a new strategy guide every, uh, every month. So you always get some value. But if you can only afford to do it one time, you get like 11 or 12 strategies right off the bat, and that's gonna last you like a whole year, so there's no worries there. So yeah, you just pick the strategy you wanna go for, and in this case, uh, you focus on keeping your economy running and your villagers working efficiently. That is the number one advantage, or the number one focus, I should say, uh, to gain advantage in this game. So after we have the six on sheep, we're gonna go ahead and go straight over to the wood. We'll make a lumber camp as close as possible to the wood line. These are just simply basics of the early game. And we're gonna continue scouting with our scouts. We want to look for two boar, eight sheep, the four starting plus two patches of two. And then we want to find a good wood line and our berries. That's like the early game uh, exploration goal. Um, as you can see, I'm jumping between my town center and my scouts. This is because I want to keep tabs on everything. But my main focus is keeping my town center running. My town center is never idle. You could push in some deer, but that's a little bit too advanced. You know, I don't want to worry about that. Focus on keeping the town center running. Um, focus on getting a good start and our village is always working. So take a look at this. I've eaten four sheep. Now I'm getting my boar and I'm moving the sheep to the side. I want to focus on luring my boar as I bring it in. Next vill, I know wants to go make a house. I'm going to already prepare that. You bring in the boar. You garrison the vill when the boar is under your TC and then you take it out and kill the boar. Simple as that. That is the basics of Dark Age here. I'm going to make one house because we're going to need one. We're going to need a bit more in there. And then we're going to make uh, a, a mill on the berries with that villager. And then we'll probably send a few more over to the berries as well. All right, at this point, it's good to just uh, scout your opponents. So as you can see, I found my three golds. I found only one stone. There should be a second one, but it's not too important. And now I'm going to be getting my second boar in soon. The reason why you take boar and sheep and even deer in the early game and, and berries is because if you start farming right away, it costs 60 food to make a farm. It's way too expensive, so you can't afford it. So these natural resources, they get you the, the good food early on and will rely on farms later on when we have a bigger economy. They're on a second boar, same thing. Bring it under, garrison the vill, take it out. If this vill is low, you can garrison it as well. And there's no big deal. And this is like something hard to do early, uh, especially if you're a new player luring in boars. But once you start practicing, uh, especially the dark age, it's going to be pretty easy for you after a while. 
All right, so I'm still following the strategy guide as to where the villagers are supposed to go. Obviously, I memorized it by heart, but if you want to just keep it off to the side and look at it, that's completely fine as well. And it's going to be four to berries here. And then the last two will go to wood. And then after the boar bills are finished with the boar, we just go back to taking the sheep. You could split them up if you want, so there's no bumping. Notice how all of my bills are working as efficiently as possible. This is something that you guys should learn. It's not going to look like this for yourself right now. But no bills are bumping. All the bills are working efficiently. All the hunt is under my TC. If I take a sheep out here, then my bills have to walk back and forth. That's not good. Under the TC, there's no walking. After 20 bills, we get Loom. That is the upgrade. Oh, look at the AI learned here. Uh, that is the upgrade that gives my bills extra food. No, sorry, extra armor. And look at this. It's one of my strategies. It's one of my builders. So you, you already know if you do it well, it's perfect. We get the Feudal Age. And now we go for the next step. The next step is to secure a second lumber camp. For the same purpose that we didn't want our bills bumping under the food. We ate two sheep at once, for example. We want two lumber camps so our bills don't bump on the one lumber camp. Two lumber camps, 10 on wood. That is the standard for an archer build. And that's going to be all the wood we need for the early game. Now I'm going to be scouting my opponent. Notice how I find my opponent and then I do a loop around his base because it's really important to find all of my opponent's resources because I want to attack him early on with archers. That is my game plan. But if I just make archers, I'm not doing anything with them. If I make archers and attack and kill my opponent's villagers, then I'm doing something with them. All right, so here we're going to make our barracks. Our barracks is mandatory uh, uh, building. We need it to make the archery range, except if you're a Khmer. And so getting it right before Feudal Age sets us up perfectly to make the range as soon as we get to Feudal Age. At this point, I know where my opponent's woodline is. He has another one here and his berries. So those are going to be my prime targets. I need a house here. So let's just go ahead and make a house. Whenever you need a house, you're 20 out of 20, 15 out of 15. Drop it anywhere, guys. Make a house anywhere. It's better than getting housed. All right, now that the barracks is down, we're going to make the switch over to the range as soon as Feudal Age kicks in. We got housed temporarily, but it's fine. In Feudal Age, double barracks is really important. You could also get the farm upgrade. These economy upgrades help boost your early game economy. And now we need to get the gold. Notice I take gold a little late in this kind of build, but it's actually the best way to do it. And it's what I found to be the most effective. If you take gold too early, I feel like that kind of makes it so you have too much gold and not enough production to spend it. So I like to go a little bit later to gold, set up my wood economy first, and then uh, finally get the four or five bills on gold that are needed. Uh, usually it's four bills, but the Britain range works faster. So we can sneak in a fifth one here. And now we're going to do constant production of archers. And meanwhile, we're going to continue developing our base in a little bit of a wall fashion. Five on gold is going to be enough for our archer production here. There we go. And now I should have constant production, no problem. Now that I have constant one range production, you could go for a second range, but I don't think it's necessary. I want to start playing towards castle age. Feudal age is really a stepping stone to your development. And my main goal is to get the castle age as fast as possible. But I don't want to do that while being fully open. So it's time to wall up my base. I like to wall up my base in a gradual fashion. So if you just wall too much one shot, look at that. That wall cost me 60 wood. If I do that here as well, I can barely afford this. So let's do it gradually with a mix of houses and palisade walls. Use two to three bills to wall your base. And like I said, gradual, mix of house, palisade wall, and make all your buildings in a wall so that you keep your space for, for farming. And you keep most of your buildings as a wall, which is going to help on defense and help keep your base very clean. I could have walled to the edge here, actually. Now I'm seeing the Twitch chat coming in. Very, very good suggestion. So look at that. Even I made a mistake here. Walling right here would have been perfect. But I'll commit to it. I already placed down a few walls, so might as well. But generally speaking, you want to wall as little as possible. And you want to get your stuff all set up. As you can see, Extreme AI is doing the same thing here. With two ranges, though. All right, now we have one range. We're going to get Fletching, and we're going to put the pressure. Four archers is a magic number. You'll see why. And we're going to continue walling up our base here as well. You don't have to play as fast as me. This is a, like a perfect example of how an archer build is looking like. Your game will not look like this. This is understandable. I've played this game for 10 years. Okay, if I try to do something you guys have been doing for 10 years, I'm going to fail miserably. So obviously it's not going to look exactly like my game. But this is a good example to learn from. 
Notice my priority. I'm always keeping my range working. I'm trying to attack my opponent and at the same time keeping my town center working. And look at this trick. When I'm about to fight, I don't just take a fight randomly. If I know I'm about to fight, like right here, I'm, I'm closing in. I spam my bills. I spam my archers. Because let them produce. While I'm focusing on the fight, let them produce. And I can get back to them later. And now I'm going to use my archers with fletching to harass my opponent here, which is the extreme AI. And I'm going to put pressure on the gold and on the wood and on the berries. We scouted all of this earlier. With archers, you can hit and run. This is the basics of micro. And look at this. I queued all my units. Now that I'm not fighting, I can go back, queue all my units again. Maybe fix a bit here and then go back and fight. Again, this is hard to do. But when you get in the habit, it becomes a lot easier. Now I can run around because he's got a lot of army. Okay, now I'm not fighting. Let's go back to my base. Let's take a look and see how I can develop. The more farms I get early, the better it is. Because Cast Age costs 800 food. 800 food is a lot of, of, of food to get in. So I need to make sure I'm farming early to be able to afford that. The faster I farm, the faster I get the food. And take a look. The 5 on gold is enough to make archer production constantly. And to actually get enough gold to click up the castle in good time. We're going to have to add a couple more there later, but you get the point. In the meantime, even though I'm pretty dumb and I made a bad wall, instead of walling here, like a smart human being, I'm still fully walled at around 16 minutes, and I've been the guy attacking so far. So even if the AI wants to take over the world and attack me now, I'm going to be fully walled, and I'm not going to be affected by the AI revolution. And this is exactly the goal of Feudal Age. It's the stepping stone to Castle Age, and now that I've got a good amount of farms, I'm going to send my last two bills, or three bills to gold. And I'm going to focus on clicking up. And look at this. I ran around AI. It's stupid. So we can actually get some more value from our archers. And I'm only attacking one time in Feudal Age because I don't really care to fight into all that army. He went two ranges. So listen, he's got a mix of archer and skirm. I'll wait till Castle Age. Very bills run out. Okay, let's make one farm. And you know what? Two farms and we'll send one over to the woodline. My opponent's also Vietnamese. It's important to understand what your opponent does. He has extra HP on archers and skirms, so I do not want to fight that at all. And now we're about to click up. And look at that. Very fast castle. Now, I'll basically bet my life that I'm faster up to castle than my opponent. Because there's no way. He made a mix of archer and skirm. There's no way he's faster than me. He made two ranges. He also lost a few bills. It's impossible for him to be faster castle than me. So with that knowledge in mind here... I'm going to look to punish him in Castle Age and go for the win. In Feudal Age, even if you're far ahead, you can't really win the game because your opponent can always make a tower and just defend with whatever he has. You can do a lot of damage, but your opponent can stabilize. But in Castle Age, I have Siege, I, have, I can drop a forward castle. Those are things that could actually end the game, break his entire base. Oh, look at that. I'm bad. I was explaining something and lost two archers. That's okay. I've got a lot behind it. And you know what? I'm going to add a second range and double down my archers. He already has some skirmishers, so my counter, in my mind, is going to be Siege. I'm going to go for a Siege Workshop and go for Mangonels. My archers with Britons will counter his archers naturally, and will counter his knights and infantry if he does decide to switch. So therefore, my Siege will be the only thing I need to kill his skirms. I'm fully walled now, and if I wasn't, I could be in a lot of problems. So this strategy only works if you follow the strategy guide entirely, and you go for the full walls while I'm putting the pressure early. I attacked early, he's defending, I'm walling, now he's attacking, I'm defending, but I've got my walls. He lost bills, I did not. I'm smarter than the AI. And I want you guys to be smarter as well. So remember, I'm going to be fast at Castle this is 100% known because of how things work. I'm going to start by dropping a Siege Workshop right away, and that's going to be a good counter to the Skirmishers. And then we're going to go ahead and upgrade our Archers into Crossbowmen. And then get the blacksmith upgrade to upgrade their range and attack. Notice I'm sticking true to the game plan here. And although he's about to break in, I should have my siege workshop ready. If it's not ready in time, no problem. You can just make a market. And that's going to completely block any aggression. Because he has 4 plus 1 range, which is 5. And if you make a market, it's 4 tiles plus a pass wall. 5 tiles and your villager is standing behind that. So he cannot ever hit your bill when you have a market. That's a pro tip right there. Now we get a market, and I've got crossbow, the superior army, so I can easily take care of him. In Castle Age, there's a lot of things I can go for, and he's coming in here, but my Magnal is about to come out. That's not a good idea, my man. He's going to go back. There's a lot of things you can go for here, and I, I talked about this in the strategy guide. Of course, I give you guys a lot of options. 
But I like to add town centers, especially with Britons, you get the cheaper town centers, so it makes a lot of sense. And there you go, he couldn't fight, even with skirmishers, he couldn't kill me. Because I've got crossbowmen. Castle Age units, even if you're fighting your counter units, Castle Age units always win. The tech is so important. As long as you don't take damage before, you're golden. So I'll add a couple TCs now. That's going to help me develop my base. And notice we're not cheesing the AI or anything like that. No, we're just playing a standard game. Also, it's really good to break your walls in Castle Age. Break out your walls, add in some economy, and continue pressuring uh, with your army now that I'm stronger than my opponent. It should be rather easy. Alright, so now my crossbows are moving in. I got my Mangano coming in. He's still in Feudal Age. Look at that. Look at these. AI is not very good here. And take a look at what he can do here. Not much. And look at that. Castle Age versus Feudal Age. Those skirms that were scaring me, I was running like a chicken. Now I'm running at them. They're the chickens. That's much better. And now behind this, I'm adding in a lot of economy with 3 TCs. This is where the game gets very hard to play, by the way. In Castle Age, look at how many resources I have. It's probably natural that you're going to have a lot of resources stockpiled. It's not good to have stockpiled resources, so you want to spend it. Take a look at how I spend it and try to do something similar. It's going to be hard for you, though. So I've got 600 food. Okay, I'm making crossbows, bills. What else can I do? Maybe I can get an upgrade. That's worth it. Let's get another upgrade. I can afford it. Obviously, I'm not going to get these upgrades because they don't benefit me at all right now. So I'm going to get upgrades that benefit me. Okay, what else can I do? Maybe I can have zero stone. That's probably bad. Let's go take some stone. Yeah, I've still got a lot of food. So maybe, okay, let's get wheelbarrow. Maybe I'll get town watch. It just helps my vision. And hey, if you want to do a switch to knights, all power too. You can. Anything to spend your resources, anything that makes sense, is worth it at this stage of the game. There's no right or wrong. Everyone has their own style. And as long as you're doing something that's relatively you know, strategic, and that makes some sense, you're going to be doing well. And with my army, I'm just doing something very basic. It's crossbows that I've been massing the whole game. And I've got my siege that counters the skirms. And now, like I said, he wants to switch the knights. I click, he's got no armor. My archer will shred these guys. Look at that. Dies like a fly. And there's nothing he can do to counter this. And even if he counters it, counters it even if he kills his army, I've got my economy is developing 60 builds. Back, back home. Remember in Dark Age we had 20? Right? Now we have 60. This is triple what I can do in Feudal Age. So in Feudal Age I was doing one range. Hey, now I can do a third range. But I don't want a third range. I want Ballistics. Let's get a University. It's going to help him. Extra tech. Ah, Skirms. My Maganels are taking care of those. No problem. Take a look at how the strategy, it covers you from everything. And it's of course because I've got... Yeah, he deleted all his farms here. I've got... 10 plus years of experience here. I know exactly what my opponent's options are. If you're new to the game, it's gonna be hard for you to understand what your opponent can do and what he can't do. That's why if you use my strategy guide, it's gonna make things a lot simpler for you. I break it down so I cover all your options without you having to do all the calculations yourself. Okay, this is like standard mistake for newer players. A lot of resources being float, uh, floated. I'm focusing a lot on my micro. Uh, even though I won, let's spend it, spend it fast, boom. There, a few units. I spent a bunch of it, and I was gonna make houses. Ballistics is coming in. Maybe I go for a fourth town center. I continue spending my resources and continue developing. Why is this important? If I stayed on one town center, I'd be on like 45 bills right now, maybe 50. But because I'm on three town centers, that's a lot more production. And those three town centers are gonna help getting more villages out, which over time gather more resources, and then I can afford the more expensive upgrades, like Imperial Age, which costs 1,000 food, 800 gold. On 50 bills, it's hard to afford that. But if I'm on 100 bills, it's a lot more easy. Uh, it's a lot easier, sorry. And as far as how to play from this position, I mean, it's the same thing I've been doing. Spend your resources, and as soon as they start building up, then you can click Imperial Age. You can start expanding. Because, like, I've got 70 bills. It's perfect here. But imagine if I had 140 bills. There's no space for 140 bills here. So what do I do? I expand. I take this wood line. I take this stone. Maybe I castle here to take this stone. Maybe I expand over here to take these golds. You spread out into the land here, and that's really good. Taking a look at the statistics before I leave you guys here. Obviously, KD is crazy. We have more resources collected because of our superior economy. And then we have uh, faster feudal, faster castle because of following the builder and my strategy guide. 
and we have more fills. And this is a top tier tutorial, in my opinion, on how to beat the extreme AI. And I hope you guys find it helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and come check me out on Twitch if you want to catch me live uh, on these live streams. Uh, and if not, continue enjoying the YouTube content. Take care and peace.